So I'm going to quickly show how to set up the kiln so that you can do the burnout the night before casting, hopefully. Um, so as far as like the general rule of after you've invested, the main thing to remember is that you need to leave it for at least two hours with the base on there. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't rush it much more than that. And um, you can also leave these overnight if you're going to leave it for many days. Um, so like you've invested on a Thursday and you're not going to be able to cast until a Monday or a Tuesday, then I would suggest putting it in a plastic bag and sealing it up and then um, maybe 48 hours before you're getting ready to cast, go ahead and take it out of the plastic bag, leaving the base on there. So you want the investment to be moist, but um, definitely not wet. Um, so uh, on our flasks, we still have the name of who's casting, depending on if you're in a studio where you have a lot of people casting, um, or maybe the, the name of which thing. Um, so maybe it's the um, it's the large ring or you know you can label each thing a star pendant or whatever it is so label that and then put the um, weight of I usually still put the weight of wax so that I can do the conversions right before I cast and um, you're certainly welcome to put uh, metal weight too if you know for sure that you're going to cast in bronze or silver I like to leave it with the wax because sometimes I might change my mind about what metal I want to use and I know that I have to use a different specific gravity and a different weight. So the first step here is that I'm going to take the bottom and I'm going to pull it off. I usually do this over a trash can just in case if little pieces of investment come off, but I'm just going to pull it off. And then I like to um, twist it off so that it can release it from that um, original button that we had. Okay, so that's off. I'll do the same thing for the next one. So they do have de-waxing machines. Um, it's probably harder to find them now. I've seen some YouTube videos of people using um, like vegetable steamers and stuff to take out their wax. If you already have a kiln that is devoted to casting, you can see that our kiln has um, you know, some areas that have been uh, beaten up over the years, but this one's old. Um, you can, if you have good ventilation, you can burn the wax out and, and just, uh, um, it can just dissipate, uh, or you can use a steamer and you can steam the wax out ahead of time and then put it in. So I need to make sure that that rubber base is off. I'm gonna open up my kiln and I'm gonna place it in the kiln. This is the thermocouple back here. That's what's um, making sure that we have the right temperature um, on our computer. And so you wanna make sure that the flasks aren't touching that. So this is just sitting in front of it. Um, and then you can see my steel grate underneath, which is allowing the wax to burn off. Make sure those rubber bases are off. And then you also wanna make sure that the uh, flasks are not touching the elements. Um, so they, they just sit right in there. I have a steel tray that has multiple levels of um, like a grating in them so that the wax has a place to um, fall down and burn off. Uh, if not, you can, you can take your um, flask and tip it up on its edge and put a little soft brick piece underneath it. Um, I really do like the tray because then I can take it out and I can clean it every once in a while and it's not degrading the bottom of my kiln so bad whenever the wax is burning out. So um, there is that. And then we need to talk about um, setting the kiln. So I wanted to share how we arrived at the settings that we did in order to set the kiln. And um, when you buy your investment, um, generally uh, and definitely in the past, there was instructions on how to do so. Um, this particular company is called Shore International Corporation, and they um, used to have these great instructions online. Um, but generally, um, I've been using for years, I've been using Kerr Satin Cast, and then now there's another version of that, um, that investment as well. And it often is a PDF on the company's website. And so. This particular one reminds us that the size of the flask depends on how um, many hours our cycle needs to be. And so the small flasks 
can do a five hour cycle. So if you were in a rush and you needed to create something really quickly, and um, you know, if you're in those small flask sizes, you could wait the two hours after investment and then you could burn out for five hours and then you could cast the same day. Um, for the larger flasks, three and a half inches by four inches, especially, um, we do an eight hour cycle. And for most of the things that I do, I do an eight hour cycle. And then for the four inch by eight inch, you do a 12 hour cycle. And then I would usually do a 12 hour cycle for organic material that you're gonna burn out. Um, because it takes quite a, quite a while and quite a bit of temperature to be, to be able to get wood and things like that to burn out. So um, I'm gonna do an eight hour cycle. And this, these instructions, um, and then there's also instructions in multiple um, casting books, um, but these instructions remind us to ramp up the temperature. So we are gonna go two hours, it's gonna take two hours to get to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, another two hours to get to 700 degrees Fahrenheit, and then three hours to get to um, 1350 Fahrenheit. And then we go back to one hours at our casting temperature. And my casting temperature is gonna be 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and look at the computer so that you can see the settings. So you can see that my computer says idle currently and it says 70 degrees. And so that's saying that it's 70 degrees in the kiln. You can also see that I have um, cables going to power and you can see that this one is going to the thermocouple and that another cable is going directly to the um, uh, kiln in order to set the heat by the computer. So my my particular computer, I've already done the programs for different um, ramps that I'm going to need to be using. And so for this particular one, I'm going to start with program, which is number four on my computer. So I push number four, program, and then I'm going to push number four again because that's how I have it set and push enter. So the first thing that you're going to see is you're going to see ramp one is 150 because I need to take two hours to get to 300 degrees. And so that is telling the computer um, go 150 at a time until you get to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. It will have a hold time of zero because I don't need it to hold at that temperature for any longer. My ramp two is going to be 200 degrees because I was already at 300 and now I need to slowly ramp up to 700. So there's my 700 degrees and that you can see that it has a Fahrenheit temperature so we know we're at the right setting. Again it doesn't need to hold at all so it's going to say zero there. Um, ramp 3, we were already at 700 degrees and then I need it to take 3 hours to get to 1350. And so the closest that I can get is that 325. And I keep pressing enter, there is the Fahrenheit number 3 and that's getting to 1350. And finally, again there's a hold of 0. Finally my ramp 4 is trying to get it back down to 1000 degrees and um, I need that to take an hour. Uh, as well. And so I was at 1350, I need to get to 1000, so that's why that one says 350. And then there's my 1000. Um, any of your kiln instructions are going to help you with this, and they're going to show you that ramping thing, so make sure that you keep your instruction manual or that you use the PDF off of the Paragon website if that's the computer that you're using. That's the one that I'm using. Um, so you can see here that after this, I have a holding temperature of eight hours because once it's up to temperature, I need a little bit of time in order to um, sometimes work with students or um, to do my own castings, but I leave it for eight hours and then that would turn itself off. Then I press enter again. It goes to ramp five and it should say zero and then I'm back at idle. So I need this to fire off tomorrow and so now I'm going to push delay, which is number three and I'm going to have it delay for eight hours because I'm here in the afternoon and I need it to be ready at 8 a.m. So eight hours, I press enter and I press enter one more time past that idle and then there is the delay and it should be blinking and it should say eight and then eventually it'll say 759 and we know that we're good to go. I like to check my kiln one last time, make sure that they're that the flasks are in there and that the rubber bases are off, that the holes are faced down. I like to make sure that all paper products are put away and that there's nothing on top of the kiln anywhere around the kiln and that there's a good one foot of space around the kiln. And so there you can see that my delay just switched to 759, so we know that it's on. 
Last step is that I need to turn on my ventilation and I usually put up signs that um, make sure that people won't turn off the ventilation. Ventilation has to be on if you're going to burn out the wax and that's going to happen at like roughly 500 degrees and um, it'll start probably in the 300s. Um, so ideally I like to do that at night um, so nobody's here. But my ventilation's strong and so it's going to pull everything out. Um, that's it.